for uh, having us here today. I was pretty impressed to see Lyle embracing a bit of technology when I first arrived. Like, this is absolutely dinker. <laughs> He, uh, he reached into his bag and brought out this as the timepiece for me to, for us to keep an eye on things. And I wasn't sure. Because when it first came out, it was looking like that. And I thought, he might be a sentimental fellow and he might have actually brought his mum along. For us. <laughs> I'm sure I just wasn't too sure. But anyway. So look, um, I'm going to have to go pretty quick because I think we've got about seven and a half minutes. No, no, you, you've got ten because, because yeah, okay. then we're going to go on the bus. So look, yeah. um, our, this is uh, one of our tertiary projects we've recently opened mm -hmm. in Auckland. Um, it, it, I don't want to talk too much about technology, I've already just spoken mm -hmm. about that right now actually, but every, every dinner party you go to there's always somebody saying that their, their kid you know, uses an iPad at sort of age two months or whatever it might be, some amazing <laughs> sort of bright kid. And so that, and, and, but also we're, we're finding that our par parents have got computers at home and you know, that, that whole technology thing is really absolutely happening. Um, thank you. So but what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about Workplace, because I think um, Workplace is actually a, um, it's our office. It does look a bit like a bus crash. But um, the, the reality is there's 170 people in our Auckland studio. There's about 20 in our Rickett and Road studio. Um, but what, a key part of it, the parallel between the office and what's happening in schools is that, is that you get a big, flexible environment Flexible means different things to a lot of different people, but furniture is a key part of the solution. And well, I'm not, I'm not actually a furniture salesperson, but I think it's um, if you look there, there's high, there's high tables, low tables, kind of little enclosed seating things. There's a bunch of meeting rooms behind us, but there's, there's what it's about is actually giving people choices of how they, where they do things. And so you know, just like this room here, all the tables are the same height, all the chairs are exactly the same. The, the, the choices are a little bit limited here, but if you, you know, if we had some taller tables at the back and things like that, there might have been a different way of configuring this space, perhaps. Um, so it's not, I mean, you might say, well, it's an architect's office, it should be a little bit kind of nifty, but this, this project is a big one for the ASB Bank. Um, it, you know, if you look uh, on the side there, there's a, there's a nine hole putting <laughs> golf course. And that, what the bank said is they want their staff to think differently. So if you want to have a meeting, you don't necessarily have to go and sit in a meeting room, you can actually go and get a couple of putting clubs and, and have a chat while you. While you Tap a board around the office. Um, now I know where all my bank fees go. Um, but you know they're also quite set up. So uh, you know that whole kind of work-life balance thing. You can do your bacon and eggs at, in, at the office. And this this counter you can see here comes right through and becomes the reception counter. And so when when a visitor comes into the office, they're actually in the staff um, reception. And the same thing happens in our office. You come and visit us in Auckland, you're all very welcome to come, not all at once, but if you, if you pop up, we've got a barista right by our receptionist. And so it's very much that thing of when you have someone around your house, by the time they've got to your kitchen, they're kind of embraced by your kind of situation or your family. And I guess we're starting to see that that action starting to happen in the schools now as well. So, if it, you know, the question really is that offices aren't like this. You've, we've all, you've all seen, you know, these kind of old places. But... Um, Actually, that's quite efficient. I could get a lot of people into a space like that. <laughs> um, you know, and, and then the question is, why are classrooms uh, like that? And uh, this, this, is, this shop always reminds me, I went to Bernstein High School. I, you know, I never, ever can super recall other than a couple of really cool teachers. You know, you open the door and there's a grid of desks there. And you think, you know, there's some really good learning in here today. You know, I don't actually remember ever sort of feeling. It was, you know, Bernstein's a great school. But um, I went to a, a, it was an education talk. Uh, last year seminar, and it was a, it was an educationalist from overseas, and they talked about that moment of, you know, that really powerful moment. But I say, and, and I guess the, the example might be if you're learning a new hobby, and you you are like a complete sponge soaking up all this stuff, and and they're saying that that is kind of like the you get those sort of moments when the light goes on, and you really kind of take in this stuff, and they're saying that's what school should be like, which is kind of interesting. And I, I, I mean, this is this is the ministry's stuff. I've told you I put this slide in. It was good to see Jasper and uh, Jackie. Too. <laughs> it's good to see um, Jasper and Jackie, you know, pushing the boundaries of collaboration and getting married. Now, the rain. We we have a lot of fun. Um, so, you know, what is it about? Uh, what is it about? Because we know where these kids are going to end up in some sort of wacky workplace. What is it about the schools that's actually preparing them for hitting that environment in the, in the near future? So um, I'm just going to blat through these. So prime, this is a school in a quarry. It's a school in a, in a hole, actually, in Auckland. And it's, uh, you know, there's, um, there's a hundred-year flood situation which will entirely flood the entire village that they built down here, apparently. Um, 
if the pumps don't work. So look, um, the first stage of the school is up on the on the half of the picture on the on the far side, this, the, which is um, underway now. And what we're doing is building this new thing in the bottom um, bottom, the sort of slightly more shifted thing. And what what they've got there is learning hubs. They call them people call them learning communities or whatever. But there's there's like you have the village of the main school, but then the sort of micro villages within the school, and their 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 mini village or a hub. Is 75 kids and three teachers is their kind of module. So you can see it's kind of quite open and fluid. It's, again, it's not rocket science, it's quite straightforward spaces. You can shift stuff around in the future. We had more glass doors and things between it up until about, we'd actually started on site and the, um, the school actually came to us and said, actually, we're going to take out more doors. We just want to make this kind of basically one big space. The space on, the, on the, your left is um, what they call their bookable space, so you can actually kind of shut that down if you need to have some of that sort of a nice noisier or quieter kind of space. But the thing that staggers me when I go into, into this school is, and it's not only this school, but there's all these new schools where they've got a very different approach with kids. You know, like when we were all at school, if someone came in the door in that classroom, it was like, Yahoo, we've got something to kind of distract me. And you'd all, everybody kind of like, well, who's, who's this? You go into these schools now and the kids don't even, know, they don't flicker. And the only thing, I, I'm not, not a teacher, I don't know about this stuff, but the only thing I can put it down to is that possibly they're just super engaged with what they're doing. And, you know, they, they, they're, they're, they're fantastic little kids. <laughs> I've got three kids there. Kids are all, they're all good. Um, so, that's, and I just want to show you this one because it, that's kind of, this is the new bit. And so what you've got is, there's a hub here, a hub here, one here, and this is, this is their next iteration. They're being really brave now, so they're moving from 75 and 75 to 150 with six teachers. So. Uh, these guys are kind of pushing the boundaries a bit, and they have, uh, you know, every week they'll have virtually a whole day of other schools coming to their school to look at what they're doing. So the, these guys are, they're interesting. And if you're planning a new school build, I'd say get in a, in a plane and get up there and have a look, actually. Um, now this is another one, this is Albany, which is, um, a couple of things about this one, which is, in terms of what I wanted to talk about, was the whole school is one building. So it's, we built the whole school for 1,300 kids. It's a senior school, so it's the final three years of school. Um, the ministry had done, had engaged another practice to do a feasibility study. How would you put a high school on that site? And that, that there's a whole lot of bush there, you see, which is actually really quite special. Um, they, they we're going to level all the bush and spray buildings over the whole site. And we said, well, actually, that bush is actually pretty cool. We should keep that because that's actually going to be a resource at some stage for the school. If we put the school as one building, what, what that does then is gives you, because you keep hearing about this thing called flexibility, but. If you build a building over here, another one over here, another one here, and then that might have tech and that might have art, and this one might have music, and in five or ten years' time, and someone says, I want to put that over there, and then it's, it's a bloody mess trying to sort it out. So if you can get the whole school into one building, and if there's any principals here with high schools in um, Christchurch, <coughs> I'd, I'd urge you to try and think about trying to scrape all your buildings together and get kind of like a super block, and that will give you super flexibility later on. So that to rehash or re re kind of engage with the planning, you can actually just shift and turn a wall, so it becomes like changing a fit out, which is a lot easier than changing a whole building. Actually, talking about changing buildings, Jackie, I did hear you say you're going to extend your building. I must give you a business card. That <laughs> <laughs> can be quite good at collaboration as well. Right. <laughs> um, so then, look, this is just a quick snapshot of, El of Albany. And what it's got is a learning community of 135 kids for their learning community, um, and five teachers. And there's another one down here, and they have specialist kind of labs they call them but they're you know science media tech whatever so there's there's just a quick plan of the school that heart in the middle it's kind of quite an important thing i think which is if you think about the whole school as a learning village is that thing of uh, and when you're planning your school your new school or your university it's that thing of where is the town square in this village you know where's that kind of like so many schools in new zealand you go to and you think oh, okay i kind of think i've got something to park my car now there's a little finger saying office here and you get around the corner and another one saying go around there it's just sort of like messy so Quite good if you can bring the front door and uh, the kind of the, 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 that's the whole school there. That's um, that's the that's the, that's that where that red heart we looked at just a minute ago. Receptions there as well, just off just off the picture there. But food is a big thing, so it's not the tuck shop pie shop thing out the back with a whole lot of kind of pipe work queues that you have to sort of stand in and sort of get bullied in and all that sort of stuff. This is because well, all the kids these days are pretty sophisticated. All, all of your kids got brought up in cafes and kind of push chairs and mums and kind of all that sort of modern stuff and. And when they get to school, there's no reason why they should abandon that. So we're saying, like, we'll go with, go with that, make that kind of part of the thing. So fire station doors lift up quite like that. I'm, 
I'm actually really interested in getting a school that have, would have an opening roof over part of it. So if anybody's got an interest in that, I'll give you a business card as well. <laughs> um, but look, it's it's um, it's uh, it's it's pretty open. I was actually back at the school recently, and what they said, I'm trying to I'm trying to pack this in a little bit. But what they, I said, what would you change? And they, they said, well, actually, we'd take out the breakout spaces, which was a complete surprise to us. They said, we, we actually, there's a little bit, but what I mean by that is there's small meeting spaces that might have a table, one of your tables here. Um, they reckon they don't need them, that the kids actually don't use them that much. And I don't know whether it's because they feel a little bit unsafe in there, or I, I don't know quite what the reason is, but um, that's been an interesting kind of simple learning. Um, also, we quite like the sort of spatial thing of up and down, you know, and you can see the kids upstairs, see the kids downstairs, and it's very what we call kind of fluid space. So, you know, it's kind of pretty busy, pretty full on, and it's the same thing when you go there. These kids are incredibly engaged with their learning, you know, they, they hardly notice. Uh, well, actually, all new schools get a, a thrash of visitors, so there's probably a little, there's probably a component of their being kind of bored with visitors is that they're kind of, they're utterly used to seeing them, but um, anyway, so this is, uh, Coming down the home straight now. Thanks for for hanging in there. Uh, uh, this is a new one we've just done at uh, tertiary. So we've got primary school, high school, and now tertiary. Um, this is St Paul Reeves in uh, Auckland City, um, and it's the same sort of deal. You know, it's it's just about making kind of interesting spaces where kids, students, like to kind of hang and um, parade, squeeze themselves in. Um, and I suppose that's kind of an interesting one because it's got, uh, you can see that thing we talked about at the very beginning about furniture being a large part of the solution. And you can see here there's, there's, there's kind of what we call collaborative social learning, but there, there are, where you can have a breakout thing, you can, you know, because you can say, look, go and do that, come back in an hour's time, get a table and get a few people around the table, work on a problem, come back to, to, uh, to see your, um, these images are a little bit burnt out, that projector needs a little bit of an upgrade if someone's talking at the hotel. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit brighter. Um, furniture, I won't, I won't dwell on it, but just the, the key message is if you're going to spend millions doing a building, don't, don't scrimp on the furniture, don't put crappy ordinary furniture into it, put beautiful, interesting furniture. So then you can actually spend less on the building and that will allow you to fund some cool furniture because we all like that sort of stuff, you know? Um, so that's just a quick shot of that, so it's pretty bit hard to read, but the, that furniture stuff is that kind of pinky, orangey stuff that's sort of running through the. Um, that's where they sort of, it's the spaces that, what it does, this building brings five different levels together in the campus, so it's sort of like a mediating, melting kind of place. So, and it's been an incredibly successful building for the campus. Um, some of the outdoor stuff, look, for us all, I'd suggest every one of us probably had a significant <coughs> learning moment and it wasn't in a classroom, it was kind of like outside, and it could be, so I'd be quite keen to hear some of those stories later on if anybody had time, but, um, it's, you know, that, that you, do, you do get some quite significant moments outside, and I guess, don't scrimp on the landscape. This is, this is a message for Lorraine, actually, um, for the ministry. But, you know, like often a ministry budget will allow you to have a packet of grass seed to sort out the landscape afterwards. <laughs> it's quite good if you can actually have something a little more kind of, a bit stronger, a bit more robust than that. Um, and again, it's just that thing of, um, you know, learning can happen everywhere. So this, and it's that social cafe kind of world is, it's going into the workplaces, it's going into the schools as well now. That's us. Thanks, guys.